Basically, all my money was seized and my entire business was essentially shut down. And I was I went from making $15,000 a month to nothing. And obviously, you can imagine that being really traumatic and traumatizing, especially because I wasn't really scared of losing money. I was scared of going back to work. In that moment, I was very, very open-minded to alternative methods of accepting payment. And so I remember telling the story and then I had a good friend of mine say, well, you should start accepting Bitcoin. And I said, dude, I'm just going to get banned from Bitcoin. He goes, you can't get banned from Bitcoin. And that's when I was like, what do you mean? I, I was like, that sounded, that could not have sounded more attractive to me. I live unbanked off of cryptocurrency, and I use BitRefill extensively because it lets me pay with crypto at places that don't yet accept it directly. This one service more than any other helps me live on crypto, pay your prepaid phone bill, or buy gift cards to thousands of major retailers around the world, all with cryptocurrency, including for exact amounts so you don't have to buy more gift credit than you need for a specific purchase. You can use BitRefill without an account, but if you get an account, you can earn rewards points, which translate to savings, and you can also hold a balance denominated in dollars or euros to protect yourself against market crashes. Go to bitrefill.com, click Create Account, and enter the referral code DCN, or follow the link in the description. Hey everyone, I have the wonderful pleasure of speaking with the one and only, as far as I know, David Bond. How's it going, man? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, so... I wanted to talk to you because you're one of those unique people that uh, actually uses cryptocurrency and came to it from an actual, like, legit point of view. Not like a someone like me who just likes the stuff and just thinks we all should use it. And you know, but you actually came about using it from a practical way. So first, if you wouldn't mind for the the viewers at home, if you wouldn't mind quickly saying like who you are and what you do for basically a work, basically. What's yeah, sure. Uh, my name is David Bond. I have a YouTube channel. Um, it's mostly travel vlogging. Occasionally, I'll give my opinion on different topics, on relationships, uh, stuff like that. And um, I've been, you know, living off of uh, the internet for about five years, selling digital products. Mm -hmm. So, example of that would be, um, you know, I have a course called The Single Man's Guide to Japan. Mm -hmm. I have a course called The Digital Pickup. Uh, a hacker's guide to meeting girls online. I have a, a course called My Travel Toolkit, which, mm -hmm. is, which is a program that teaches guys how to, um, like, it's like travel hacks kind of thing, you know, like how to get cheap flights and how to, it's just a, a, a digital nomad course. And um, I've been living off that basically for five years. And uh, occasionally people will call me, um, pay me for Skype consultations, but, uh, 80, 80 to like 95% of my income has been through selling digital programs online mm. or that I created, you know? Yeah. And so it seems like you picked a lifestyle, started living it, and then just monetized it by showing other people kind of how to do it slash showing off the stuff you do. Is that kind of like an encapsulation? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It just basically, it started with me just doing this for fun anyway. Mm -hmm. And eventually, a few people started to watch me and I remember having a few thousand subscribers not taking it seriously at all and um, I was stuck at a job that I wasn't really happy with and a friend of mine he goes hey you know you have 4,000 subscribers it's not a lot of subscribers but if you had 4,000 people in a room and they were all sitting in chairs like looking at you you would take that seriously mm -hmm. and I was like that's a really interesting way of thinking of it and it's like, not only that, but if you could find something to sell them, even if it was a dollar, that's $4,000. Even if half of them bought it, it's like, and you know, yeah. so that's how it be, kind of began. And, um, you know, and eventually uh, I, I started making a bit of money doing it. And then eventually I quit my job and I took it super seriously. And um, so here I am, you know? <laughs> yeah. So how does that intersect with cryptocurrency? Yeah, so my story with cryptocurrency is very recent. Um, the first time I even interacted with Bitcoin or crypto in general was a little over 12 months ago. Mm. And my first introduction to Bitcoin, specifically Bitcoin, was uh, 
my friends back when the bull run of 2017, 18 happened, I had a, a few friends that were interested in it and they were like trading it and buying it. And they tried to get me into it, but I thought they were so stupid. <laughs> I was like, okay, so, okay, so what's the point of this? And, and no one can answer any basic questions about it. So I thought they were dumb. I, I thought it was like, you know, like just a trend. Yeah. And so uh, years went by and this is where crypto kind of, or where Bitcoin like slapped me in the face. It was, I was making more money than I had ever made selling digital products. I was doing about 10 to $15,000 a month, which was so much more money than I've ever made in my life. Um, back at my regular job, I was making like $600 a week. And so I go from that to making 10, $15,000 a month. There was one month I made 19,000 freaking dollars, right? So I'm high, I'm, to I'm on top of the world. And, and like all of a sudden I woke up and I got PayPal has limited your account. And I was like, what, you know? And all my business was going through PayPal because that's all I knew. And I called them and there was basically no appeal. I could barely talk to anybody. And I had like hundreds of people on a reoccurring subscription. <clears throat> Everything went to zero. Basically all my money was seized for six months and my entire business was essentially shut down. And I, was, I went from making $15,000 a month to nothing. And obviously you can imagine that being really traumatic and traumatizing, especially because I wasn't really scared of losing money. I was scared of going back to work. <laughs> what a you know terrifying what I mean? I was prospect. Like, I don't want to go back to the fucking carrot factory. Mm -hmm. And so in that moment, I was very, very open-minded to alternative methods of accepting payment. Because when I got banned from PayPal, my friend said, well, why don't you just get Stripe? I go, dude, I'm going to get banned from Stripe too. If you're curious why I got banned, mm -hmm. basically it was, I had a big wave of chargebacks. And on top of it, PayPal investigated mm -hmm. what I was selling and they were like, this isn't very good. You know, you violate the terms of service. So you're a naughty boy. You know, they, this, basically the political correctness stuff started creeping into our culture. And this all happened around 2017 or uh, 2018, 2000, late 2018, I think. Yeah. So I said, okay, I need to think about this. I was making a lot of money. I'm going to get on Stripe, but I'm also going to sign up for like a payment processor, like a real one, like mm -hmm. the ones that like porn sites use. Mm -hmm. Cause I figured that if they would let porn sites do it, they probably let me dude. It was so unbelievably invasive. They wanted social security card numbers. They wanted my address. They wanted to see every single transaction I had ever made on PayPal. They wanted to log into all my websites. And on top of it, they wanted to go to my fucking house. They wanted to verify an office. And I said, I don't have an office. I don't live anywhere. I, I travel the world. The office I gave you is my mom's house. And they're like, it's okay. We can visit her. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, not that, as a that, courtesy. That, he goes, it's okay. We can visit. I'm like, dude, is this real? And so I remember telling the story and then I had a good friend of mine say, well, you should start accepting Bitcoin. And I said, dude, I'm just going to get banned from Bitcoin. He goes, you can't get banned from Bitcoin. And that's when I was like, what do you mean? And keep in mind that I was the state I was in. I, I was like, that sounded, that could not have sounded more attractive to me. Mm -hmm. You can't get banned from Bitcoin. It was a little bit like, you know, I felt like I had been robbed, you know, and then I'm like in this state of just like trauma. And then someone comes up to you and is like, you know, if you try this really interesting thing, it's kind of like limitless, you know, it's like, yeah, guy's desperate. And then he's like, do you want to take this if you pill? Take the red pill? Yeah. yeah. And, and so I was so open minded. I'm like, you can't get banned from Bitcoin. What does that mean? And then, of course, I started to take interest in it. And at this time, I was uh, really into like anti-censorship stuff because obviously this really like, censored. <laughs> yeah, I got super censored. And again, this was all happening right when the political correctness stuff started floating in. And so my, my Facebook posts started to get suspended for hate speech. 
And so I signed up for this platform called Gab, which is like a free speech Twitter. It's kind of ghetto, mm. but <laughs> they usually are. They had the same problem I did. They got deplatformed, and, and and so then they started accepting Bitcoin. I was like, whoa, they're accepting that thing that my friend talked about. Mm -hmm. So I was like, how do I get Bitcoin? What, what the what is that? And so I bought some on Coinbase, and then I got I bought Gab Pro, which was there because i was like what does it feel like to do like I, it was so weird to me so i i did it and it worked and i was like all right that was kind of cool so as an experiment i i threw a little qr code on my on one of my websites and i was like yo if anyone wants to buy my course in bitcoin i'll give you half off like i was just wanted to see yeah and i got like three people bought it like instantly and they they zap you know they, they scan the the freaking code. And then I got my phone, my phone's buzzed. And then they emailed me and I was like, whoa, that was interesting. I didn't have to sign up for anything. They just they, zip, send it to you. I was like, I didn't have to let some creep go to my mom's house. You know what I mean? I, just yes. put, I put a JPEG on a, the website and now I have this thing in my phone. And then what really pushed me over the fence was when I found purse.io. Mm -hmm. Because of course now I have this like you know couple hundred bucks. I'm like, well now what do I do? So I googled you know what can I buy Bitcoin with? And then when I found purse, I, I bought my first purchase to test it was I just bought some Starbucks. I bought like a six pack of cold brew mm -hmm. and it came. And I was like, oh my fucking god! I just accepted some kind of payment with no bank, no mm -hmm. nothing, and I converted it into coffee and it's in front of me. And at that point. I was like, I'm going to do, this is it. I don't, the, I'm, I'm going to push this as hard as I humanly pot. Like it was so liberating feeling. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I had already developed this complete utter hatred of like PayPal and this idea, just the idea that some dude in a room could pull the plug on my entire life. Like, like that amount of power is unsettling. Yeah, you probably never thought about that until it happened to you. Yeah, you take it for granted. You're like, well, PayPal, that's the internet. That's how people do internet stuff. PayPal, everything's PayPal. You just mm -hmm. And so then you're, you get kicked off and you're like, hold on, I, did I just get kicked off? Like, am I, is this it? Am I over, you know? Mm -hmm. And so when, that, when, that, when they zapped that money and I got it and then I used it, I was like, dude, whoa. I was like, what else can I do with this? What else can I buy? What else can I... You know, does anyone even know that I even earn this money? Mm -hmm. Like, because the wallet wasn't on Coinbase. It was on my phone. I was using the Bitcoin.com wallet, you know? Yeah. Then I found out accidentally the street I was living on in Bangkok, there was a restaurant that accepted Bitcoin cash. And I didn't know what Bitcoin cash was. Mm -hmm. I remember the night I was drunk and I was walking out and I seen a sticker. I was like, Bitcoin, what? No mm -hmm. way. I instantly went up. I'm like, hey, I'll buy something because I wanted to see if it would work. Yeah. And then I found out it was only Bitcoin Cash. And I was like, what's Bitcoin Cash? What the f why not? Why not BTC? Yeah. There's another one. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. I, I just didn't know. And so I, I took a selfie of me in front of the sign and I, I went home. And then I was like, well, how do I do Bitcoin Cash? And then I found the side shift thing, mm -hmm. right? So I, I side shifted like 50 bucks and then I went back to that place the next morning and I bought, hmm. I bought like chicken wings. I was like, dude, this is cool, man. I didn't care about, I, keep in mind, I had, I had no loyalty to any coin or I didn't even know that there were other coins really at all. I didn't, it was all, it was yeah. all the same thing. So that's kind of a long story. I mean, there's more to it obviously, but that's yeah. basically how it started. And yeah. So now where are we today? How so? I'm sure you're still taking crypto for your your stuff, right? Oh, now I only do it. If if people offer to pay me for a Skype consultation, they say, "Do you have PayPal?" I go, "Yeah, I do." But guess what? I don't. I don't want it. I literally will say no to money. I don't give mm -hmm. a shit about your stupid PayPal, your Zelle, because with Zelle, I have to worry about being doxxed because it will say my name. With mm -hmm. PayPal, I have to worry about a chargeback. With Stripe, I have to worry. It's like, fuck you, Bitcoin, or go away. That's mm -hmm. literally my attitude. So even, even sponsorships come up to me. They're like, hello, David, we'd like to offer you $3,000 to talk about underwear. 
And I said, okay, I accept Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Monero. So you pick. They go, oh, sorry, we don't do that. I go, well, then go away. Then get yeah. the fuck out of here. That's literally how I'll talk to them because I don't care about it. I don't care. Like to me, it's more important to it's more important to establish a boundary that you got to like to to be to do business with me. Mm-hmm. You got to do this because I'm not I'm not going back to the PayPal land. Yeah. I'm not going back to charge back where I have to call Visa. Hey, Visa, please give me my money. No, nah, yeah. I'm not interested in that. I'd rather I'd rather not make money. I'd rather make less money and never have to have those phone calls again. Than, than you know what I mean? Like then it's be just absolutely uh, balling, but be some be kind of begging for people. Yeah, and I I know that I make less money because of what decisions I make. But guess what? I don't care at all. I'm not broke. I got a bit. I got a bit saved up. I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? Happiness and quality of life and principle is way more important. Than making a bunch of money you know what i mean yeah now how much of a difference you think that makes because you're you're 100 crypto right so how much well, let, let me let me it's not 100 percent. a lot of my a lot of my programs still have stripe integrated because it's still there mm-hmm. you know but with my latest program the digital pickup it's only crypto i allowed people to pay with mm-hmm. stripe but i charged them more money so mm-hmm. i said yo if you want access you gotta give me 350 if you want to use crypto, it's only 200 bucks. You get a $150 little jab in the gut if you're going to use this crap. Because, and of course, I got chargebacks or refund requests and stuff. I always give the refunds, but but eventually I just pulled the plug. I said, nah, I'm good. You yeah. Know? So now, do you think that it's like, if you would say, let's just say a perfect world is you get 100% of the, your former sales now that you're crypto only, but I mean, or even better. But if it's not a perfect world, what percentage do you think it is? Like how much drop off do you think you've gotten by just saying, look, this is the only way you can get my stuff. So my last product launch, which was the digital pickup, it was about 60% crypto and 40% um, um, not crypto or credit card or whatever you want to call it. And I... (laughs) Well, here's the thing, though, is I know that I probably would have made more money dollar amount if I just didn't do that because I had a lot of people try to buy it and they wanted the $200 rate and they couldn't. They're like, it's not in my country. I don't understand. And I was like, well, then you got then you got to pay the other price. And they're like, they just didn't want to do it, you know. Mm. And look. What is is what I'm doing smart financially? Probably not. You know what I mean? But it's, it's, it's more, it just feels better to me. I can't explain it. Yeah. Yeah, It just feels better and it's correct. I, I know, I don't know how much more money I probably could have made or how much, you know, but here's the, no, on the flip side, I have a lot of people that are like, dude, my first time ever interacting with crypto was your program. Like Mm -hmm. I bought it and I used it and I was like, that's kind of cool. And like, there's a lot of people that are like, look, I want, I want the damn program. I'll go through it. You know, I'll do his little Bitcoin thing. And some people had some leftover and they're like, dude, it went up. That's so cool. You know? And, Mm -hmm. and I don't know, you know, I mean, you gotta understand that like I'm coming from a, like a really ideological, like philosophical, like stance. Yeah, uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not advocating this from like a business perspective. If I mean, I've I've done. I've helped people with their online stuff. Like I've I've helped. You know, like my ex girlfriend. I helped her uh, set up her digital digital programs and her like Patreon and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to get. I didn't really even introduce her to the crypto stuff because I felt like it's more important that she gets off her feet and like makes as much money as possible. Mm -hmm. She's she's not in a position to like pick and choose so much. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like you want to pick your battles after you've already like, you know, like I'm already on my feet. Mm -hmm. I'm already doing my thing. If I, if I was doing this starting out, I probably would have just added the option, but not actually given a discount or been, I would have just taken whatever I could have taken, you know? Yeah. And so even though it turned into an ideological thing, at some point it was a very practical idea, which is 
I can't get my money because of stupid PayPal. And then you sort of had to improvise and then you sort of fell in love with the freedom of it and then it became ideological. But why do you think that your business model is the kind of thing that just doesn't work that well with traditional payment systems? Like why do they not like what you're doing for work? Well, one of the things is most of the digital programs that I made were really edgy. Mm. And a lot of them I discontinued. For example, like the first thing I ever sold was called the Idiot's Guide to Getting Laid in Japan, mm. which was like $67. And like it instantly made the news in, in all these countries of being like controversial. Mm. And the whole entire program was like my marketing was really like over the over the top and really edgy, you know what mm. I mean? And um, another program that I had, let me think. I'm trying to think of what would piss people off. Um, you know, like I had like this single man's guide to Thailand and like, you know, it was like how to avoid lady boys, right? Something like that. Whereas a payment gateway, a payment processor, what they're going to do is they're going to have algorithms that are going to scan your front page. They're going to scan your website for keywords. And if there's too many naughty words, there's too many edgy things, then they're going to want to place you in what's called the high risk category, right? High risk and charge so, back, or is it just well, more generally high, high risk, risk? It's high risk because it's controversial. It's involving like a lot of taboo like material. And if you're a giant mega super corporation like PayPal, you don't want to deal at all mm -hmm. with that. So they, it's not. It's in their best interest to just like only have the cleanest, nicest, safest thing. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. don't want to deal and it, you know, it makes sense. It's not a big deal, but here's the thing is I don't want to, I don't really want to like, like tame anything. I don't want to like mm -hmm. make a decision based on will PayPal say this is okay. Like I don't like making those kind of decisions. Yeah. I've never been like that. You know, like I'd rather get in trouble saying what I believe is true. That it's the same thing with like, t like, like Gab. Gab is not the greatest platform. It doesn't have a lot of reach, but I use it out of principle. I use it because I want to support them. Mm -hmm. it, it's like, I, I know that I'm not actually spending my time on Gab and it's like producing a result that is like better than other platforms. You know, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Gab, but it's, it's an ideological choice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but here's the thing is, the Bitcoin stuff comes with its downsides. Yeah. It's really annoying when someone asks for a refund. And for example, do I refund them in the exact amount of crypto or the dollar value? So if someone paid me 0.5 BCH for something and then BCH doubles and they're like, I want a refund. It's like, what is actually the right answer? Do I refund them the dot 0.5 or do I refund them the USD amount? Hmm. That, that that's a question that I haven't really at this moment, I just do whatever the USD amount is because I figure, well, we're using this as a meet, like we're using this as a channel to, to send value and the values are moving. So just go with the tide. Um, another issue is it's really easy for people to, to claim that they bought your program. If they can somehow grab a transaction, you know, blockchain uh, explorer link, Mm -hmm. you know, they could claim that they bought your shit and they're like, give me a refund. Here's the proof. And you're like, well, how do I know that you bought that? You know? Yeah. That's a, I think a special part of like the refund thing is it's not just, well, you know, it's like when, if you have a open refund policy and it's crypto, a lot of people are like free crypto time. <laughs> so let's yeah, see if well, I can milk well, this guy. I use, I use coin, uh, Coinbase commerce, mm -hmm. which, doesn't KYC me, which is pretty funny. Yeah. And I use, um, I've used coin payments. Mm -hmm. So they actually make it easy. It is custodial, but yeah. it sits in their website and then you just take it out. Like it's not a big deal. And they have a little POS style system. You know, you can see the name and the dates. It's, it's actually not that bad. Yeah. You know, but you know, sometimes people, sometimes people are like, I'm like, dude, I have no way to, pr I have no way to know that you actually, this is actually you. Someone's like, oh, I, I, log, I, I logged out of my email and I can't remember my password. 
it's like, well, how do I know that, you know, it's, there's no way to prove it. So, yeah, that part is a little, little rough around the edges. Cause it's like cash, right? So you give them like a piece of piece of paper. You're like, Hey, this was totally me. I paid yeah. those, those. That was mine. That 20 in your stack. It's like, oh, okay, really? <laughs> is that <Yeah>. true? <laughs> you know, but, but I mean, the whole journey has been really crazy because, um, you know, lately I've been a little bit more interested in the Bitcoin cash community. And it's funny cause that all happened by accident. Yeah. Like it was basically when I took that selfie in front of that place, mm -hmm. um, I posted it in on our Bitcoin mm -hmm. yeah. and I, I thought, well, it's Bitcoin cash. It's Bitcoin. Like it's crypto. It like it's Bitcoin on it. <laughs> yeah. Like why would they care? You know, I don't know. I just didn't think, I just didn't think, and so I just, I posted a selfie. I was like, I found a, I found a place that, what I say? It was like, I found a, uh, a business that accepts Bitcoin near my house. How cool. Something dumb. It was like the only Reddit post I had ever made on a cryptocurrency subreddit. Yeah. And instantly I got suspended, banned, and shitcoin trapped. And they started like, and I was like, what the hell? And I'm like, why are they being so mean? And then I realized like, oh, because it said Bitcoin Cash. I'm like, oh, okay, well, what's There's the Bitcoin the Cash coin. subreddit, like whatever. And then I post it on there. And then people like were really nice to me. And then some girl in Thailand named Jaja, everyone knows her now. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, that's so cool. If you want me to give you some stickers. I was like, really? Sure. I'll take some freaking stickers. And she gave me some stickers. And I was like, this is really nice. And then eventually, you know, I found there was a uh, two other places that accepted Bitcoin cash. And apparently what had, what's going on is that in Bangkok dash, there's a bunch of dash people and there's a bunch of Bitcoin cash people and Bitcoin cash people. They're way more like they're way more aggressive about onboarding. Yeah. And so there was, there were just happened to be more Bitcoin cash Thailand people. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I went to a bar and I was blabbing about this and the, the bar owner overheard me and I was, I was telling him about Bitcoin stuff and he's like, I want to accept it. I'll take it. I was like, really? And so I onboarded him and then I posted it on uh, the Bitcoin cash subreddit. Keep in mind that I had just, in my, I had just interacted with Bitcoin for like less than 60 days and uh, I posted about it. And then freaking I got hit up like people are like, yo, dude, this is cool. Like and then I just got invited to stuff. I got invited to the little meetups and I just started going and and I just really discovered that. Wow. Like so apparently there was like this civil war that happened. Yeah. And I'm like Hash learning war. about it and I don't I don't give a shit. I mean, I'm like, look, if I can if I can spend it, it's valuable to me. Like that's like so like, you know, for me, a cryptocurrency is can I spend it on something? Yes. Okay. So it's useful. Like if I go to like, you know, Traveler mm -hmm. and that there's the coin isn't on there, then I don't care about it because yeah. it's like, why do I have it for what to look at it? It's stupid, you know? So, you know, and it, it all happened just so, so fast, you know, mm -hmm. here I am just some retard with a GoPro walking around and all of a sudden I'm getting interacted with, with like all these crypto people and then I'm going to meetups and, you know, and then all of a sudden I'm getting, you know, I'm, people are like, people find out that I'm a YouTuber or whatever. And they're like, holy shit, David Bond, who the fuck's this guy? And they're like, you know, like, yo, like, like they wanted my clout or something. Yeah. And just long story short, all of a sudden I'm in Bali with freaking Roger Ver. It's like, yeah. you know, this I, I'm, I'm like, this is awesome. Like I, I would, but here's the thing is I would hang out with any, I would be down. Like if some, if the Monero people or whatever did the same thing to me, I would have been like, yeah, let's do it. You know? Yeah. So do you think that there's, uh, do you think that it's easy for other people to do what you did? I mean, you hit, it, you kind of had a unique circumstance where you have a unique business model. You had bad things happen to you, and then you just went down the rabbit hole and then, then loved the stuff. 
But so for like exam, like for the average digital nomad, if such a thing even exists, who just mm-hmm. running around selling online things or doing an online business while he travels the world, do you think it's something that you could would in good conscience be able to recommend to someone else at this point in its development? Uh, yes, and and there's a few reasons. Um, number one, if if I'm if I'm in a room with someone who sells online products and I'm going to talk about crypto, I'm not going to talk about all the philosophical stuff. I'm going to say, look, there are some people in some countries that don't feel safe buying stuff from you. Like I got people in China and other countries reached out to me years ago, years and years ago, asking if I accepted a uh, crypto and I said, no. And I didn't really know why. And they're like, well, in my country, everything I buy is being spied on. And I just don't feel, you know, like there are some legitimate people that just don't feel comfortable buying certain things on the internet, be, not because what they're buying is bad, but because, you know, like in China, like everything's monitored and surveillance, you know, mm-hmm. probably and, in, the, in the U S too, but let's not go there. Yeah. Huh? Well, you know, a little bit, probably a little bit more like you can get in trouble for buying something that you're allowed to buy. Mm-hmm. But in the U S I don't, I'm not sure. If, I don't know. Well, it's gotta be drugs or something probably. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I would say, listen, like no chargebacks, that's a big one. Um, you're going to have a percentage of people out there, a small market that will take interest in your stuff. There's a lot of people who like to buy with crypto because they don't want to have their name tied to something, you know. Um, so there's a lot of people who just they invested in crypto and it went up like crazy and they're just sitting on a big stack and yeah. they're like, you know, those people exist. And you'll just look cooler. You'll look like a cooler business guy. Like we accept crypto. Like it's so fucking cool, you know. Yeah. Um, I would, and and I would recommend them on those reasons. Basically, not only that, but so I'll, I'll tell you an example. I, I recently kind of radicalized two friends of mine. Recently, mm-hmm. we were in Mexico, and a friend of mine was dealing with a four thousand dollar chargeback. Wow. Basically. So he's a pickup artist and he charges money to teach you how to pick up girls. And the guy's really successful at it. And the guy's a freaking awesome. And he had some guy in Canada who took a boot camp, charged him 4,000 bucks. And like 28 days later, got the charge back and he lost. Right. So I was telling him about, about crypto and Bitcoin and stuff. And he thought it was stupid until I said, download a wallet. He's like, oh, I don't want to deal with the text verification. I'm like, no, 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 that's an exchange. And mm-hmm. I, 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 I sent him like a dollar in a BCH, and I was like, dude, did I? Do I know your name? And uh, and like, he's like, wait, you can you can do this without. He didn't know that you could use crypto outside of an exchange. He hated it because it was like email verification, text verification, photo yeah. ID. And and so he thought any time that someone had to use it, you had to do that. Yeah, and that's a to be honest, like I I don't remember too much of the banking world because I haven't had a bank account in four years. But it seems like the crypto fiat exchanges are worse than like banks sometimes. Like yeah. as far oh, as like sure. oh, you got to hold up your ID and all this kind of stuff. And it's because people don't realize that crypto is something you can lose mm-hmm. and you have no one to save you, whereas with bank stuff, you can always make a phone call. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, long story short, I started talking to him about it and he called me today mm-hmm. and he's, he got a, he got a big client that paid him a, a full Bitcoin for some coaching stuff. Like, like 12 a long, grand? Wow. Yeah. And he, he's bragging about it. Like we literally talked today and he's like, dude, this is so cool. And he's like, it, he, he was telling me this is the kind of thing he would never agree to because he'd be worried about a chargeback. Mm, he's, like, yeah, like, he he's like, he's I, like, I, I'm always scared to accept big jobs, big clients that are willing to pay a lot because I'm scared of chargebacks. But it's like, can, can you imagine that you're scared of making more money because you don't want to deal, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about chargebacks. I don't think most people really experience them or even use them. So, because everyone's consumers. No one's ever the receiver of Yeah, that. exactly. Can you just, as a consumer, just do a chargeback on anything? Just decide you don't want to pay it? 
pretty much anything that you buy on the internet, you can charge back because you can just claim that you don't recognize the charge. Now, it's difficult, <clears throat> it's difficult to do a chargeback on a physical, on a, you gotta go? Okay. Um, it's, div it's difficult to do a chargeback on a physical swipe mm -hmm. because the chip, you know the chips? Yeah. Well, you, don't, you probably don't know the chip. I, I well, do the remember chip, having a chip before well, I got rid of my cards. The new, the new cards have chips on them. And I, I know this because I tried to do a chargeback because this uh, this airline wanted to charge me for an overweight bag, but th their rate was insane. Mm. Their, I, it cost me two hundred dollars for the flight, and their their overweight fee was three hundred dollars. Oh, it's terrible. So, and I said, I'm I'm sorry. I'm, I'm like, because usually an overweight bag is like forty bucks, fifty bucks, mm -hmm. and they were just like, well, if you don't pay it, you can't get on the plane, and I'm like this is a scam. Like I'm not carrying, like <clears throat> I'm not transporting a car. I'm carrying my luggage. That's like three kilos above. And in the moment I'm like, well, dude, me bailing on this flight is going to cost me more than $300. So I said, okay, no problem. And I slid it. And as soon as I went on the other side, I called the bank and I basically wanted to say like, dude, this is a scam. Like mm -hmm. these people, there's no warning, and I, I try, and they're like, "Well, we can see that you that you were physically there because the the chip." Mm. And I was like, "How'd you know?" And I was like, "Oh my god, dude, they know that." And um, you know, I was like, "You know, what, dude, I just need to like just give up on this." But yeah, pretty much anyone, if you buy anything online, you can charge it, charge it back. Yeah, and that's um, I guess that's a consumer protection necessity supposedly because of the way the cards <laughs> system works. You just, anyone could just take a number and then, you know, you just get money from it. It's not a bad thing in the grand scheme of things, because at the end of the day, so if you're a business, if you're a business, mm -hmm. it actually gives you a lot of incentive to make sure that the customers are really happy mm -hmm. because you know, in the back of your mind, they can always just charge back. So it is, it is kind of a balance. To be honest, it's like not even, it's not that bad because the consumer knows that he could charge back and the, the business owner knows that he could. And so that does make consumers safer because businesses are going to jump up and down to make them happy. Whereas if, it, if there was no chargebacks, then you could buy, you know, let's say you buy something online and then you just get a pile of shit. You have, you're like, well, what am I going to do? Just give them a one star? You know, it's like, well, what if you're buying something from China where their rating systems are all fake? Like, <laughs> yeah. it does, it does, it, it's, it does have a value, but in some contexts, like, for example, if you're doing a physical service in person, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, if you're paying, if so in his case, he has physical face to face clients that are paying for his time. And so he gives them his time. And then they charge back. So it's like, it's like, it's not, it's like not, criminal. It's like fraud right there. Right. Pretty much. But it, it, there's nothing he can do because it's like at the end of the day, it, you know, like it, it's just the type of thing that there's nothing he can do. He just has to like, just live with it or something, you know, which is like really, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the kind of thing you would even say crypto only for any amount over this much. Because, well, yeah. I told him, I'm like, you, you, what you need to do is you need to have, you need to have the incentive be irresistible. You know, you, you need to give them a discount, but then also charge them a fee, like have the, have the price difference be so drastic that no sane human being is going to, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then when they, when they complain to say, you know, to say, listen, like, this is, you know, I don't, well, I don't know what they should say. Cause what I would say is not what other people should say. Cause I was, I'm, I'm really mean when I, when people tell me no, <laughs> because I'm like, all right, conversation over. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, you know, yeah, it probably works with your brand though. You know, a little bit, a little bit because I'm, I'm so addicted to just freedom and like, like, you know, I'm, I usually talk that way to like, brands who want to do sponsorships because they're so annoying anyway <laughs> they're so like 
like I can tell they're I'm just on some list that they're emailing, you know? Yeah. And they're not they don't really know, like, oh, we watched your videos, they're really great. I'm like, really tell me which video is great. And they're like, oh, 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 so you're an intern that's being paid nothing to yes. spam. The, the so, video uh, with the, the dildo soap was a good one yeah. at the end. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it, I don't know, it's just the insincerity and like I can yeah. just tell it's just some so uh but some of them said yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's when I'm like, I'm like a deer in the headlights. I'm like, oh shit, you're actually gonna say yes? Okay, hold on, wait, let me re- let me read this email again. <laughs> yeah, like so you just say the uh, only crypto or get out of here just to sort I, of get I just rid say, of it. Uh, I said I only accept this and this and this, and mm-hmm. that and all that's all I'll reply with. Mm-hmm. And then 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 when they reply, I'll talk for real. Because yeah. I don't even read I don't even read them. I'm like, oh okay. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like accepting. So the last kind of question on the the merchant side of things here, um, which is literally the first question that everyone says, other than who do you do your taxes? Whenever I talk talk about crypto stuff, is what about the volatility? Now, of course, if you if you're like a business that auto converts, which it doesn't sound like that's what you guys are doing. Uh, um, I've never I've never I've never sold anything. Yeah. So. How, like, has it been a problem? Has it been, you know, because, like, for, you know, for me, I've decided to just, like, super lower my expectations of, you know, like, live close to the bone just in case, you know, I have to live in poverty for a while, whatever, with the fluctuations. I've just gotten ready and just ridden that for a while. But, like, for a business, when you have, you're just running, like, you know, has it been a problem for you or how have you managed it? Like, a real business, like like a restaurant or something, mm-hmm. I feel like this conversation is totally different because they have supplies, they have things that they need to buy. And, um, but I, I mean, really cryptocurrency, it really is the internet money. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like, it makes more sense on the internet. And yeah. if someone, you know, if someone was like, what about the, so the question well, you're asking what I, what, what's my answer to the volatility or what I would say to other people, what is the question? <laughs> yeah. Well, first, for you and your business and for the business of people like you, how, is the volatility a kind of a problem? Well, or is it a benefit? For me, it's not it's a pro, it's not really a problem because I my net worth is I still have most of my net worth in dollars and mm-hmm. I do so it's not a problem in a way. Mm-hmm. Um and the volatility exists. It's a weird question because I just kind of write it. I do move in and out of tether a little bit, mm-hmm. but it's it's a, such a it's like five percent of my crypto holdings. I'll actually do that with, like, I won't actually really do it with a lot. And it's more a fun to me, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like something goes goes up like crazy, and I watch it every day. I'm like, man, there's no way it's going to stay that high. So I'll I'll move a bit in tether. And I, and I I use the Bitcoin Cash Tether. I don't mm-hmm. use the Ethereum Tether. Um, yeah. The Bitcoin Cash Tether is like so much better. It just it's just not supported on as many wallets. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, but for someone else, you know, this is what I would say. I'd say, listen, like you're an online business. You you do business. You do internet stuff. You probably pay for hosting. You probably pay for you know cloud storage. You probably pay for domains. You probably pay for uh, hotels there are ways you can spend your crypto on that stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to deal with volatility, then just once you get the crypto, just pay, you know, pay, pay some bills with it and just don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. You know, like with a name cheap, you can actually, um, you can pay, you can, what what was it called? A top up. Like you can actually just pay your pay, give name cheap your Bitcoin and it will just like, have it in a balance or like with proton proton mail yeah you essentially are buying credit you're like oh let me throw 100 bucks in my name cheap and then it just stays 100 bucks but mm-hmm. you're using it to pay your domain stuff yeah you know or with cloud stuff i i don't i use dropbox because i have a an un- insane amount of data I, there's no other there's no other solution for me that ex- yeah. except so, but there are, you know, crypto and Proton, Proton Drive's coming, man. Proton Drive, they're going to, they only accept BTC though, which I've, I've harassed them so many times about. Um, 
I mean, I don't know. You know, volatility, it's there, it sucks, but I would just say find some stuff to buy and then when things are pumping, just throw throw some in some bills, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's when I first received my first Bitcoin ever and then I, you know, started using mostly Dash and stuff later, but mm -hmm. it was, I think, $130 per Bitcoin at the time. And now that's what, like, that was 2013. And wow. so... Like if you ride it up and down and up and down, like as long, that's the thing is if you have more freedom to just, I'm only going to spend this much now, or then you just go hog when it goes, you know, goes like way up, then I think it's a lot of a better you position. Know, yeah, it's a personal preference. And I can understand that, you know, my answer is an attitude probably doesn't satisfy mm -hmm. like, like, right. You know, the average person or something. It's yeah. just like, like I got bills, I got to do stuff like, I can't be playing these games with fucking side shift and tether. I just need, I need to pay something, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, if that's you, then just sell it, just sell it on exchange and just do whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it seems like it's not, it's pretty easy to, you know, once you can explain to a business how this can help them, it seems like relatively easy. Like sure. If customers want to pay me the magic internet money. I'll, I'll do that. Now the, the other side of the equation is, you know, how do you get customers to be able to get some that then they want to spend? And of course, yeah, so you mentioned, it, you mentioned a few is, things. The, the, see, this is the, one of the funny things is the problem with like Bitcoin cash people mm -hmm. and the problem with like that side of the philosophy, right? You have like yeah. the dad is there all, everyone has a hard on for spending and adoption, but they don't ever talk about why should someone get crypto? Like, you know, mm -hmm. and whereas like the Bitcoin legacy people, th they're so addicted to like the opposite, hodl. right? Well, they're all like hodl, buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin. It's all, it's all buy Bitcoin, which technically is probably better on price mm -hmm. because if you're telling a zillion people to buy Bitcoin and don't ever sell it, it's like, obviously that is going to have only a positive impact on price. Whereas if you're running around saying, spend it, spend it, use it, use it, everyone use it. It's like, it's, that's not going to have, because you're, you're not explaining why anyone should even have it. It's like, why should someone acquire it? Because me earning it doesn't make the price go up, right? Because someone else bought it to buy, well, I guess maybe technically mm. if I had something really awesome and there was enough people, but um, it's not like, it's an argument to the, there's one side of the argument is it was all about adoption and spending and like using it. And the yeah. other side is like, basically they're saying, don't use it, mm -hmm. but just buy Acquire it. it. Yeah. Buy it and just hold it. Technically that narrative is probably going to be better on the price of the crypto. Right. Cause then you can onboard people to buy it by saying, dude, like this is an appreciating asset. Like, when I, when I get my friends into crypto, I do tell them that they should buy Bitcoin first. I say, listen, like Bitcoin is the one that you're going to hear on the news. Everything you're going to read about is probably going to be about it. And only when they get comfortable with that, do they start asking, what is this other one? Hmm. What is Bitcoin cash? What is Ethereum? That, you know, that's when, that's when you can have that conversation. Yeah. And then you're like, well, and then the other ones you're like, you just, you know, like with, in the case of Bitcoin cash, you know, I say, listen, like, have you ever used Bitcoin? It's not that awesome. Um, there's going to be a time where people are going to actually try to use this stuff and they're going to realize that it's hard and they're going to move down to mm -hmm. Ethereum. And then it's like, that's the most logical thing. If you're trying to move money and, and you're like, you don't want to deal with all this weird stuff, you're just going to move you're going to convert it because most people are on exchanges. They're just going to convert it to the next thing. You know, yeah. I remember, remember hearing the story that back when the fees were super high and confirmation times were like two weeks that there were, um, uh, I remember hearing about this from an interview that some guy was like reaching out to a, a Bitcoin transaction accelerator guy. Oh, yeah. I remember and, that one. Remember and the that guy one. is like, well, I'll do it, but you have to pay me Bitcoin cash. And he's like, 
what the fuck? You know, and, and it was like, like that in that moment, he realized like, damn, it's like work. even the Bitcoin accelerator guy doesn't accept Bitcoin because it's too slow. Like those moments are going to exist. But are we there yet? Maybe not. Probably not. You know? Yeah. That's one thing I noticed is during the, uh, the peak 2017 bull run when everyone was jumping on stuff, no one could move their Bitcoin because everyone, you know, literally I overheard college kids talking about, oh, my Coinbase, I got on Coinbase and buy all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, if you guys are doing this, no one can move that stuff. And then the next day, of course, Ethereum had a bunch of cats going through it, so it wasn't movable either. Yeah. And then at that point, Litecoin spiked. There was like $2 transaction fees on Litecoin because really? everyone just went the next one down, just boom, just jumped on that one, and that overcrowded. And I don't... I. Don't think Bitcoin Cash was on Coinbase yet. I think they had that weird freeze split system. And well, think- they came into existence during all this. Yeah. In fact, that's one of the reasons that the Bitcoin Cash chart doesn't look very good. Is because when you zoom out far enough, it's because they came into existence during a bull run mm-hmm. where price the price discovery was did, was retarded. Mm-hmm. So they, they got they spawned into chaos and then eventually it kind of floated around 200 bucks. So mm-hmm. it looks like it's going down, but it's like, well, it's spawned in to, you know, whereas if you look at um, the price chart of like Monero, you you can see that it was nothing and then it exploded and then it went down, but it still went up more than it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you zoom, you zoom out and you're like, oh, this doesn't look that bad. But then with Bitcoin Cash, it does look pretty bad because you're like, it spawned into the high and mm-hmm. then it just floated down. Um, but if Bitcoin Cash came into existence before that, it probably would look similar to Monero, you know, or, or whatever. Yeah, it's also worth noting that Monero had a very aggressive inflation schedule at the beginning in the first few years, and then went really low now. And so, oh, yeah, really? yeah, so that it was like worth nothing. I don't know if you've been following Monero. Um, I don't have a whole less, lot. Of, yeah, I have like ten or eleven Moneros. I used mm-hmm. to have a lot more, but this motherfucker just don't don't go down, dude. It was like thirty bucks, like. A while ago now it's like 130 mm-hmm. it's finally going i'm looking at now that things are finally going down jeez louise but i have a bu- i have a bunch of tether i'm like i'm waiting for this stuff to go back down so i can throw it back in there you know yeah so as far as like getting users involved so basically what oh, you done. provided people with is a compelling reason to to actually own it which is i want to buy this guy's guides and stuff and i can't yeah. or i'll save a massive amount and at that point, so that's great. That's like one big problem solved, at least in your case, that, you know, why a compelling reason to own it. But then, what is the experience like for most people, like most of these like knuckle dragon morons, maybe, I don't know, maybe you have extremely smart customers uh, who trying to actually buy the stuff? Like, um, there, I haven't had a whole lot of issues. I did have a few issues where people, they selected Bitcoin, mm-hmm. but they paid with Bitcoin Cash. And they mm-hmm. sent their, and coin payments had no resolution. They're like, well, that's it. You're, you're just, you just lost the money. Wow. And I was like, God damn. That happened twice. You know? Yeah. It's probably Which is really, that, that's really annoying. But it's like, it's kind of their fault. But I don't think that that could have happened with, like, can I accidentally send Litecoin to a Bitcoin address? Like, no. I don't think. And that's probably why Bitcoin Cash changed the address format. So they're, there isn't the cash address format is a little bit different. So yeah, like that that. super, that's a big problem. Mm -hmm. But, um, um, you know, and when, when they did that, what do I do? Do I give them the program? Cause I didn't, I didn't get the money. And so I did, I gave them the program. I'm like, look, dude, I didn't get anything out of this, but you spent the money and I could tell they were sincere. And I'm like, look, I'll just give you the damn program, man. He's like, Oh, you know, but from his perspective, he's like, what did I do wrong? Like, I've never used this, you know? Yeah. And um, um, a few other people had, there were some people that were like, they didn't trust the website. Mm-hmm. They're like, I just send it to you directly. And I was like, well, the website will create your account for you. Like, mm-hmm. and that, you know, there are some people just distrusting of it. Um, there was a lot of people who they bought, they thought they could just buy the Bitcoin and spend it the same day they bought it. But a lot of exchanges are like, no, for your own safety. Mm-hmm. And so there was some, some guy who's like, he bought it like two days before the registration closed. And then. Good old Johnny come lately. 
Yeah, and then Coinbase is like, you can't send this until six days for your own safety. I had to deal with that. I, I had to deal with that a lot, you know. Yeah, that um, I did have a, a case. There was there's some app I don't I haven't kept up with it lately, but it's called Dash Queen. That's basically a beauty pageant thing that people vote by sending Dash to like the addresses of like the models on there, or whatever. And it was just a goofy thing, but a lot of people got participating, including a friend of mine. She was trying to win. And so she was trying to get some some people she knew that she used to be a host family in the states where she lived uh, to donate, and then they're like, all right, so they signed up for Uphold, and then they like bought some Dash to like support her, but they couldn't move it out of the platform for sixty five days because of ACH transfer oh. issues. Because you can sixty four days in, you can reverse an ACH transfer apparently. And so it's like that whole, like, I don't understand why it doesn't work. It's yeah, like, you see, that, that, that kind of stuff, that's going to kill, like, that's going to kill someone's interest in that so quickly, you know? Yeah. So, um, but I mean, exchanges do it for a reason. They do it because there's so many scams. There's, you know, so many old ladies get a call from some guy in India telling him, telling her that he's the IRS and she runs out and, buys all this Bitcoin and sends it. And then she doesn't realize it's a scam until it's too late. And then it's, you know, that happens probably so often that they got to do that, you know? Yeah. But, I mean, YouTube comment look, sections full of telegram links and all that. Yeah. Well, look, you know, cash app is making it pretty easy soon. Um, Venmo. I know that Venmo, you can't send it out. You can't mm -hmm. receive it. But here's the thing: you couldn't do that with the Cash App either for the, on at the beginning. So then they let you do it. So you think they, PayPal they is going to open it up after that? Eventually, yeah. I think they're going to do what Cash App did. Cash mm -hmm. App, they wouldn't. They would only let you buy and sell. There was two two buttons: buy, sell. Mm -hmm. No send, no receive, nothing. Because I remember my friend got into it. I'm like, dude, that's not a real wallet. I'm like, mm -hmm. I can't even. Send. And he didn't care. He's like, well, I can buy it and sell it. <laughs> and that's what they're going to do first and then eventually you know the big game changer is going to be if is if square and apple pay and all these guys start getting involved and they give merchants a button they can push called accept crypto and they won't even know what it is and so when you go to the you're like oh do you accept crypto they're like oh uh yeah and they don't even know and they just push a button and then you pay and they don't even know what's happening. They just know that they got money. Mm -hmm. That is when the world will change. Yeah. Because as a business, they don't, businesses don't care about anything. They're like, look, I'm busy, dude. Like, is this going to make me money or not? And you're like, yes, it will. But you have to learn all these new things that are really complicated. Uh, I'm good. That, yeah. that's, how, that's how business people in the real world are. Mm -hmm. They're like, they don't have time to sit down and learn about your goddamn private key. You know what I mean? Yeah. They want to push buttons and things happen. So if they're like, well, I already have square cat or square, you know, like there's a coffee shop in Bakersfield that accepts that's a square kiosk. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, and it has all these like Google pay and, all, and they don't, they don't even know. They just know that you, you can pay money. But if there was a little button that said Bitcoin and you're like zap, or like Dash is app, like that would be, that would be insane. Yeah. Because now all of a sudden you can argue for crypto way easier. Be like, well, yeah, you can accept his payment and you can spend it anywhere. It's mm -hmm. like, that's the, that's the thing with businesses is it's hard. Like, well, how do I spend it? Mm -hmm. You send someone a couple of dollars in, in Bitcoin cash and they're like, okay, well now what, now what do I do? You know, that right now I have to say, well, gift cards, you yeah. know, it's fantastic. Everyone wanted a gift card, right? Yeah, you're like, but it doesn't. It just doesn't <laughs> solve a problem. So mm -hmm. it's it's a pure thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this has been a very enlightening chat for people wanting to know a lot of you know firsthand what it's like. Now, where can people find more about you and your work? Uh, just search me on DuckDuckGo. You'll get a mm -hmm. bunch of links. Yeah. Um, Go down YouTube. the rabbit hole. <laughs> well, if you use the uh, other search engine, you'll get a bunch of bad stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but, uh, uh, no, just you know, look me up. I got a bunch of videos online, a bunch of stuff online. But uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess one thing that I would say though 
is my biggest pet peeve with like the Bitcoin universe and like crypto Twitter is everyone's addicted to like arguing with each other and not solving anything, you know, mm -hmm. like no people need to get addicted to like onboarding people and getting new coiners involved. And, you know, it's like, who cares that you have a slightly different philosophy you know, like, you know, Bitcoin cash versus like the Bitcoin people, like that's like the most classic rivalry ever. Right. But like, how does arguing with another crypto guy make the world a better place? Like it doesn't at all. You yeah. Know? It's, 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 it's like if the democratic party split into two parties and instead of arguing with Republicans, they just argued with each other. It's like, dude, you're not getting any more votes doing that dumbass. Yeah. Like how, you know what I mean? Like you're trying to get elected. That's the point. So what are you doing? You know what I mean? So that's why I, I see on crypto Twitter, like scam, shitcoin, trash, eh, uh, liar. Oh, uh, high fees. Slow. And it's like arguing. It's like, dude, mm -hmm. just use so it. Why does this matter to Jessica on the couch who mm -hmm. doesn't know anything about Bitcoin? Does she want to hear about this? You, you, you know what I mean? Like, the focus should be on new people and making the world a better place. What are you making? What are you building? What, what problem are you solving? And like arguing with a guy on Twitter doesn't solve a problem. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it doesn't. It yeah. solves a problem if your problem is I have too much free time and I hate my life. Then it solves a big problem. Which apparently but, I think you might have just blown a lot of people's minds right there. <laughs> yeah. You know, so that's my biggest gripe. And look. Everyone's guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. My friends are guilty of it because it's it's so fun. I mean, what is there anything more fun than shitting on someone on Twitter? But <laughs> that's what Twitter all, was made for. <laughs> if that's all you do, I mean, my God, dude, solve a problem, bro. Onboard somebody. Exactly. Dude, I, I've all, I've onboarded my whole freaking family, dude. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm a, everyone has a wallet. They all got a wallet now. All my friends got wallets. I mean, I walk into a room and I start talking, and I got people busting open cash app how do i get involved this is cool mm -hmm. you know you got to be that kind of person yeah blabbing about fees and bullshit is not doesn't convince anybody of anything mm -hmm. you know so that that's my kind of it's my feeling well that's a great way to wrap this thing up well thanks again for being on <laughs> yeah man appreciate it love the love the stuff also guys sign up for coin tree and donate to joel Venezuela. <laughs> Close enough. Cointr.ee slash yeah, the desert Cointree links. Awesome. It's my favorite thing. I watch videos and then I click the coin tree and I donate. I'm like, oh, thank you. Boom. And I do this all day. And then when people don't have a coin tree, there's this YouTuber called the hated one. Mm -hmm. I love his videos. <laughs> Apparently he's not that much of the hated one then. Well, yeah, he does videos on privacy and in, in his description, he has a Bitcoin link and a Monero link or a Monero address. Every single time I watch one of his videos, I'm like, God damn, this video is awesome. I want to give him some Monero. Mm -hmm. Like I want to send him five bucks, but I can't copy it because it's a, it's a description. Mm -hmm. And I just get so annoyed that I just never do it. You know what I mean? Like I literally want to donate every time I watch a video, but I never have done it because it's so hard. If he had a coin tree, the guy would have had like $40. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, because it's like click, click. It's just you can click. You know, Solutions. So. Make it yes, easier. All right, man. I got to go. Thanks All for right. chatting. Yep. Thanks. Peace.